hear about it. Talk about it now with Matt Patrick. K. Terry's news time is 846. He is treated like a rock star wherever he goes. Congressman Ron Paul joining us here this morning. Congressman, welcome back to Houston's Morning News. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. All right, let me play something that you said, and I want to talk about it. They're a trillion dollars in debt. We don't have any jobs for them. The quality of education has gone down, so it's a failed program. We are talking this morning, uh, Congressman, about college, about the fact that uh, we find college students uh, and their parents now uh, looking at about a trillion dollars in debt, more debt from college loans than from credit card bills. You say a lot of this has to do with the federal government uh, giving money to students. I would agree. I would also say, and I'm interested in what you think, that the more the federal government uh, lets kids borrow, the higher the tuition rates are for the colleges because they know the kids can get it. You know, this is, this is the whole problem. If the Fed creates the money and then the Congress directs where the money is spent, it doesn't raise quality or more people uh, don't get better education. What happens is the prices are pushed up. But in this case, more people did go to college. Uh, the prices were sent way high. The quality went down, and they were left with the debt and no jobs. And then people think, well, you, well, you're heartless. You don't want young people to have education. But it wasn't too many years ago when we all got our education, uh, you know, without the federal government involved. So uh, five, ten years ago, it would have been harder to argue the case, the same as it would have been harder to argue the case that, well, the government's providing houses for everybody. Isn't this wonderful? And the right. price is going up. But uh, it's a deception. It's sort of uh, an entrapment, um, and it's all po- political because, you know, you can get a lot of votes by saying, oh, I'm for houses for everybody. I'm for education for everybody. I want everybody to have free medical care. But lo and behold, you know, you finally have to pay the price, and that's what we're doing in our educational system. Congressman Ron Paul would like to be president, running for the GOP nomination. And uh, I, I have to say, you're doing well in the straw polls. Uh, I, I see an awful lot of people taking interest uh, in your latest economic plan. And uh, in just a second, Congressman, if you'd hang on, I want to talk about that economic plan, which includes uh, getting rid of uh, not only student loans, from the federal government, but getting rid of the Department of Education. And on that, you and I agree as well. We'll come back and we'll take a look at uh, the Ron Paul economic plan as he has rolled it out in just a moment. Your Houston Morning News with Matt Patrick continues. KTRH News Time is 851. Joining us, presidential hopeful and Congressman Ron Paul. And Congressman Paul, thanks again for your time. I know you are very busy. Hey, let's uh, talk a little bit about your economic plan. You're going to cut a trillion dollars during your first year in office, balance the budget by 2015, take us out of all foreign wars, and eliminate no less than five cabinet-level agencies in the process. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of that. Good. That sounds like a good program. Do you like that program? Yeah. Yeah, I figured that you would. Now, uh, there are people that say, I know this is hard to believe, but there are people that say that that's just ludicrous, um, that uh, you would uh, immediately hurl the economy into recession. So I guess the question that I have for you, and Congressman, listen, I like that plan for the most part, uh, but uh, you know, when you when you really take a good look at it, do you think in a year you could do those things without really putting the country into a tailspin? Well, I, I wouldn't do it if I thought it would make things worse. I think it'll make things uh, much better. I think we're heading in that direction if we don't do something like this, because I don't work on the assumption that uh, we're questioning whether or not we're going to have a double dip. I think we've been in a steady da- decline since the year 2000, because our population has increased by 30 million. There's essentially been no new jobs. Standard of living is down for everybody, and uh, we're not out of this recession most people realize that we're not out. So if we continue to just bail out everybody and print money and run up debt, because there's no serious attempt by any of the other candidates or anybody in Washington to cut anything. The only thing they talk about are cutting the proposed increases. So they're not challenging the very system that created this monster. So I think that uh, you, they talk this being extreme. I think uh, we've been living with extreme ideas 
that you don't have to be responsible, that deficits don't matter, and you can print money when you need it, and you can police the world forever, and then entitlements last forever. But the entitlement system has failed, you know, and we talked a minute ago about housing and education and right. difficulties in medicine. So I don't think I don't think this will continue. It's going to get much worse. So that's why I think we have to change our ways. Uh, you've uh, run a uh, slick TV ad uh, that trumpets uh, this plan, and uh, you go after uh, some of the uh, Republican front runners like Herman Cain and uh, Governor. Perry, certainly after the president, and I, I thought it was a, a good TV ad. I, I thought that I would ask you before I let you go uh, about foreign policy, because that's where uh, many times you part ways with folks, and, and even I have some trouble sometimes uh, with some of the things that you say about foreign policy, but mm -hmm. do you feel as though uh, what took place in Libya uh, was a win? Uh, did the government uh, of the United States, uh, you know, did we do a good job? Did it take too long? Was uh, Obama leading from behind, or uh, uh, you know, was this something that uh, he should hold up as a job well done? No, I think it was very destructive because of the way it was done. Uh, nobody can uh, <clears throat> lament the fact that a dictator is gone, but I think they're going to have chaos and civil strife there for a long time. But uh, the way it was done was the president did it on his own, not getting authority from the people or the Congress. He got his authority from uh, the United Nations and NATO and, and really flaunted it, didn't even tell us about it. And, uh, and, and it did cost us over a billion dollars, and, and it will continue to, to go up. But I think it was a to total victory for world government because not only did they, uh, the president ignore the proper procedures here for when we go into war, but uh, he enhanced the power of the United Nations and NATO. But now he's down in Uganda. And uh, in the past, at least, presidents acknowledged the fact that they had to at least tell the, tell the Congress. Uh, but uh, in this case, there was none. So I think it was a step in the wrong direction. And uh, there was a lot of death and destruction there, and we are morally responsible, although our troops didn't go in. We had CIA agents in there as well as, as, well as special forces. Right. And I was just looking at some of the pictures today. There's a lot of destruction, a lot of killing that happened in these last few months. Congressman Ron Paul joining us this morning again. I thank you for your time. Uh, good luck with the race. We'll certainly have you back. And uh, get some sleep, would you please? Okay, that's a good idea. All right, Congressman Ron Paul joining right. us here this morning.